After studying this module, you shall be able to understand the concept of translation and back translation in research, importance of back translation in research, other techniques used in translation, criteria for translation equivalence, quality determinants of translation, model for adequate translation. Cross-cultural research in social sciences have caught attention in recent years. Of particular interest is the sensitivity of methodology used in cross-cultural research. Researchers involved in the cross-cultural research have to translate the measures if no standardized translation is available into different languages. The language in which the standardized measure is available for use is referred here as source language and the language in which the cross-cultural researcher wants to adapt it is to refer as target language. Translations and adaptations into languages other than English or the source language is necessary to attain cultural and contextual sensitivity by Algeria et al. in 2004. However, simply translating the measure from the source language to the target language may lead to various measurement errors due to inadequate translation processes, insensitivity of items in terms of cultural norms and beliefs and unsuitable content by Hunt and Bhopal 2004. One of the common techniques to avoid these errors is known as forward and back translation. This is the most widely used technique in cross-cultural research to make use of a measure available only in one language. Translation and back translation can be used in cross-cultural researches using a qualitative methodology as well. For this is the researcher first writes down the questionnaire items or passages to be used in the study in the source language. While writing the items or the passages, the researcher needs to follow certain rules that are likely to give accurate translation by Campbell, Brislin, Stewart and Werner in 1970. A set of rules for designing the measure in the source language as given by Werner and Campbell in 1970 suggests 1. Writing simple sentences 2. Nouns shall be repeated rather than using pronouns 3. Use of metaphors and colloquialisms shall be avoided 4. Use of English passive tense shall be avoided 5. Use of hypothetical phrasings or subjunctive moods shall be avoided After writing the items or the passages in the source language two bilinguals are employed for the process of translation The first translator translates the source language into the target language the second translator then translates the target language into the source language. This back translation into the source language is a blind translation wherein the second translator is not aware of the source language originally used. The researcher now has to examine the two versions of the source language. If the two versions of the source language are considered as appropriately identical by the researcher the target language version shall be considered as an equivalent form of the source language by Brislin in 1986. The objective of the back translation is to evaluate whether the intended meaning of the original measure remains same after it has been translated into the target language. This is evaluated by comparing the two versions before translation and after back translation of the source language. In addition to back translation, following techniques have been suggested by Campbell et al. in 1970 that might be used for the translation purpose. 1. Bilingual technique Items yielding discrepant responses are identified when bilinguals take a test in both known languages by Prince and Momovar in 1967. 2. Committee approach a group of bilinguals form a committee and together translate from source to target language making it easier to identify mistakes. 3. Pre-test procedures Field testing of the translated version to ensure its comprehensibility. In a review of 80 articles in two major journals of cross-cultural research 
it was found that all the techniques mentioned above back translation was found to be most widely used by Campbell in 1970. Review of researchers employing back translation reveals the conditions where its use was reported successful. The two conditions are openness of the original language to revision after back translation and the similarity of structure between source and target language. Successful use of back translation has been reported in extensive detail by Flink in 1963, Werner and Campbell in 1970 and Sinaiko in 1963. These researchers revised the original English after comparing the back translated version to the original for differences in the meaning. Researchers using translation between Indo-European languages also reported successful use of back translation. Example, Sanaiko in 1963, Jacobson in 1954 and Bass in 1968. These included Danish, French, German and Italian. Similarity in the structure of the languages helped the translators make meaningful translations. Though successful use of back translation has been reported in the literature, but some cross-cultural researchers pointed that the process of back translation is inherently flawed by Larkin and colleagues in 2007. It should be acknowledged in the process of translation that certain meanings are specifically unique to particular languages. The same meaning in the source language cannot always be found in the target language. According to Temple in 1997, the focus during the process of back translation should be on conveying the meanings using words rather than creating literal equivalents. As suggested by Sanja Hunt and Raj Bhopal, 2004, the researchers should focus on the similarity of the concepts rather than equivalence of items. As long as the underlying purpose of the measure is same in the above source and the target language, no exact comparisons have to be made. This may be illustrated through an example of translation between Hindi and English. The word Sharam in Hindi language can be translated literally as shyness in the English language. However, the meaning conveyed when the word Sharam is used in a particular context might be completed from shyness. In the sentence, Mujhe usse dekh kar sharam aai and Mujhe uske asafal hone par bhoat sharam aai. The meaning conveyed by the word sharam pertains to shyness and embarrassment respectively. Brislin in 1970 proposed criteria for translation equivalence and translation quality in cross-cultural research. To ensure equivalence of the translated and the original versions, five criteria related to meaning and performance were proposed. The quality of translation was examined in terms of content area, difficulty and language of translation. Third, criteria for translation equivalence. Equivalence of meaning has been regarded as the most important aspect of translation by Catford in 1965 and Nida in 1964. In the researches mentioned above, citing the openness of the original language to revision, the researchers revised the original version to retain the meaning of the source and the target language. Three out of five criteria proposed by Brislin in 1970 are related to importance of meaning equivalence. 1. The original and back translated version of a passage are examined by monolingual raters for the errors that would lead to the differences in the meaning in two versions. These meaning errors are then compared in two ways. The correlation between the number of errors found by different raters would give the between rater correlation. For instance, two raters each finding five errors in a particular passage would lead to high between rater correlation. Another way of comparison would be to find the percentage overlap in different raters, finding exactly the same meaning errors. If the two raters each finding five errors in one particular passage have the entirely different list of errors, the percentage of overlap would be zero. Second, second criterion related to meaning equivalence is examination of the source version and the target version by the bilingual raters. 
The bilingual raters would point the meaning errors in two versions. These meaning errors can be compared with the meaning errors pointed by the monolingual raters in criterion 1. Third, third criterion related to meaning equivalence is related to comprehensibility. Translated version and the back translated version of a passage is presented to different subjects. A questionnaire based on the content of the passage in the original version, pre-translation, shall be prepared and administered on the subjects. The equivalence of the translated version can be established by the extent of similarity in the responses of different subjects on the questionnaire. Fourth, the fourth criterion is often known as the performance criterion, establishing the equivalence of translated version. The source and the target language versions are called as functionally equivalent if the subjects are able to perform the same action in response to the target language version as well as the source language version. Fifth, the last criterion for establishing equivalence needs four groups of bilingual subjects equated by randomization. Group 1 gets the original source language version and the group 2 gets the translated version. Group 3 and group 4 gets half of either version. That is, third group, first half of the original version and second half of the translated version. The fourth group gets first half of the translated version and second half of the original version. If the two versions are equivalent, the item frequency would tend to be same and also correlation between third and the fourth group should be very high. Brislin in 1970 called the fourth and fifth criterion as the ultimate criterion for establishing equivalence of the translated version with the original version. Fourth, the quality of translation. Bristol in 1970 suggested that the quality of translation is dependent on the language into which the bilinguals are asked to translate. He believed that the translator's differential familiarity with the English determined the quality of translation. In addition to the language of the translation, the effect of the content area on the quality of translation was also examined by Bristol in 1970. He believed that the translator's familiarity and experience with the content area affected the quality of translation. It was also found that too much detail in a passage does not allow context and makes the process of translation difficult. Another significant finding in the study done by Bristol in 1970 was related to the effect of practice on translation quality. It was found that the second translation version was significantly better than the first translated versions. Two significant suggestions have been made by Bristol in 1970 in context of translation cross-cultural research. The translators should be familiar with the content area involved in the source language material and attempts should be made to remove criterion 1 meaning errors. This can be achieved by a number of three steps, source to target to source sequence. Fifth, model for adequate translation. Based on his research and literature review, Brislin in 1970 suggested a seven-step procedure that is likely to lead to adequate translations from English to other languages. 1. An English form should be written in accordance with the five rules given by Werner and Campbell in 1970. This will help in designing a source language version that is easily translatable. Translators familiar with the content of the source language material should be employed. 2. Translators familiar with the content of the source language material should be employed. 3. Two bilinguals should be employed. First translator should translate from the original source to the target language version and the second one should blindly back translate from the target language to the source language. Some time for practice must be given to the translators to ensure better quality of the translation. Fourth, ask several raters for errors in the original, translated and back translated version for the differences in the meaning. If there are errors leading to differences in the meaning, the research should repeat step 3. Fifth, when all the meaning errors are removed, the translated version should be pre-tested on the target language, speaking population. In light of the insights gained during the pre-test of the original English shall be revised, if the need be. Sixth, 
the original and the translated version should be presented to four randomized bilingual groups as discussed in criterion 5. The equivalence of responses should be assessed in terms of means, standard deviation and correlation. Last, the experience of translation equivalence shall be reported by the researcher for review. Summary, cross-cultural research requires translating the items of the measure into different languages. The technique most widely used for this purpose is known as back translation. In this process, the original source language version is translated into target language and then blindly back translated into source language. The equivalence of the translated and original source language version is established the similarity of the original source language and the back translated version. The successful use of the back translation has been reported by many researchers. The two conditions facilitating the successful use are openness to revise the original English after comparing the original and back translated version for differences in meaning and the similarity of the structure of languages involved in the process of back translation. To use back translation effectively in cross-cultural research, the focus should be on conveying the same meaning rather than producing literal equivalence. Bristlin in 1970 has provided criteria for establishing equivalence of the translated version with the original version and to assess the quality of translation. Based on the research and the literature review, a seven-step process for adequate translation has been suggested by Bristlin in 1970.